Pearl, when will you be getting home? It's already 6 p.m., you know. Uh, I'm sorry. My meeting lasted a little longer than I expected. I'm just about to get on the train home. Huh? You've been coming home later and later these days. My boy Jill has been sitting here waiting with a growling stomach. Do you intend to make my son starve? I'm sure that you're more than capable of sneaking out of meetings at work. Please make more of an effort, young lady. Your husband's dinner is far more important than your meetings anyway. No, this was an important meeting about one of our collaboration products with another company. I'm in a position of responsibility on this project, so there's no way I can leave before the end of a meeting. Stop making excuses. To focus single-mindedly on work while abandoning your essential duties as a wife, such as looking after your husband, is simply not acceptable. My son has no need for such a sloth of a wife. He'll divorce you, I say. Divorce. Looking after him? Oh, come on. Jill's a fully grown man, not a baby. Plus, he's unemployed right now and spends all of his time at home. Do not talk back to me, young lady. Sorry. It's going to be a little while longer before I get home, though. So if he's really desperate for something to eat, you're more than welcome to use whatever's in the fridge to make something to eat between yourselves. What? Do you seriously intend to make your mother-in-law into some cheap imitation kitchen maid? Have you no shame? I've never heard of such a cheek. I'll have him divorce you if you're not careful. No, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Just forget I said anything. We won't be waiting for you any longer. Jill's so hungry. He's going to pass out if he doesn't eat soon. We'll find a sushi restaurant or someplace to eat out tonight so we won't be needing any supper from the likes of you. Hold on a moment, Mom. I understand you're upset, but let's not jump to conclusions or make threats. It's not fair to bring divorce into the conversation. We can discuss this calmly. Calmly? How can I stay calm when you're proposing something so outrageous? Making your own mother-in-law work as a kitchen maid is disrespectful to say the least. I'm your family, not hired help. I apologize if it came across that way, Mom. It was never my intention to disrespect anyone. I was merely suggesting that you could lend a hand in the kitchen, not take on the role of a maid. I understand that family dynamics can be sensitive, and I didn't mean to offend you. Well, it certainly sounded like you were suggesting something demeaning. But let's put that aside for now. We need to focus on Jill's hunger. He's feeling really weak and we can't afford to wait any longer. I understand the urgency, Mom. But as you can see, Jill is a grown man now, so he could of course handle his own meal. You shouldn't have to worry about him that much. Oh, trust me, Pearl. I'm well aware that Jill is a grown man. But as his mother, it's only natural for me to be concerned about his well-being. I've been taking care of him since he was a baby, after all. Well, Mom... I think it's time to let go a little. Jill is perfectly capable of taking care of himself. He doesn't need to be coddled or worried over every minute of the day. Coddled? Worried over? Oh, please, Pearl. It's called being a loving and caring mother. I'm not smothering him. I'm simply looking out for his best interests. And honestly, I would expect you as his spouse to understand and respect that. I do understand, Mom, but sometimes your concern can be a bit overbearing. Jill is an adult, and he deserves the freedom to make his own choices and decisions, even when it comes to something as simple as a meal. What the hell are you talking about? How dare you talk about your husband like that? It's your responsibility to take care of your husband, but now I'm doing it for you. Actually, you would certainly have to thank me for that, don't you think? Mom, we are adults. We could look after ourselves. Could you please stop intervening in our life? It's just inconvenient. Oh, good grief. You really are a failure of a wife. My son picked this short straw with you, didn't he? I'll have him divorce you before long. I mean it.
Jill, are you there? You got a minute? What is it? I was just about to go to sleep. Besides, if you want to say something, why not just come and talk to me? Why do you need to send messages when we're in the same house? But if I come to speak to you, your mom will probably overhear us. Anyway, it's about your mother. Is there no way we can live separately? This arrangement with the three of us is just not working. What? For God's sake. You're not going on about my mom again, are you? To tell the truth, Jill, I'm extremely stressed. I agreed to have her live with us because I felt bad about her being lonely after your dad passed away. But she's causing me so much stress, it's unreal. Does she think I'm some kind of slave? She forces me to do all the housework despite the fact that I'm working long hours. Not only that, but she barely ever lifts a finger herself. If there's ever anything she doesn't like, even just a little bit. She immediately brings up divorce and threatens to make you end the marriage with me. What's more, despite the fact she makes absolutely no money and contributes nothing to the household finances, she goes out to restaurants on lavish spending sprees, always bringing home bags of frivolous junk. There's no other way to put it, Jill. I've reached my limit, and I can't take it anymore. What can I do? You can complain about her as much as you like. But she doesn't have anywhere else to go. She sold the family home when my dad died. We're the ones who took her in. I could hardly send her pecking now, can I? The only money she has to her name is her pension. So when she says she can't afford to contribute, she's not lying. Plus, without my dad, she's super lonely. Surely, it wouldn't hurt to indulge her selfishness, just a little bit every now and then? This goes beyond the level of mere selfishness. She sneers and barks orders at me, tells me I'm not fit to eat in the same room as her, and forces me to eat nothing but leftovers. Demands that you, being the husband, must always be the first to use the bathtub, while she, being the all-important mother-in-law, uses it second. Then when my turn finally does come around, there are even times where she lets the water out before I can get in. For some strange reason, she constantly gives me midnight sermons on how a wife should act, so I can't even sleep half the time because of her incessant preaching. Since she moved in with us a year ago, I lost 10 kilograms from not eating properly due to all the stress. This is malicious bullying, plain and simple. It's a miracle I managed to tolerate her this long, and the only reason I did is because she's your mom. But I'm sick of being treated like I'm not even human. I've reached my limit. Please, Jill, have her move somewhere else. Maybe an apartment or a shared house or something, I don't know. Just anywhere but here. If that's impossible, at least, at the very least, could you please tell her to stop treating me this way? If you don't do something, I'm going to lose it. Fine. Jeez, woman. I get it. I'll mention it at some point if I remember. Anyway, more importantly, I need $300. What? $300? What are you going to use it for? Travel expenses. I'm looking for work right now, so I need money for bus fares and trains and stuff. What? But I gave you money for travel expenses not that long ago. You get $150 a month for that already. That's a pocket change. I already use it all. Get the real woman. $150 just doesn't cover it. Give me $300. Wait, you're... No way! Are you visiting casinos again? What? Come on, it's not like it's a problem. I don't go very often, and I hardly spend anything when I do. It's a way for me to let off steam after the hours I spent job hunting. You haven't forgotten that you lost your last job? Because you got caught sneaking out of the office and visiting casinos when you were supposed to be working, have you? You got on your knees and swore you'd never visit a casino again, Jill. You swore! In spite of that, you're at it again. 
And this time you're blowing the money that I give you on travel expenses on the slots? If that's where it's going, you'll never get another cent out of me. Oh, give it a rest, woman. You're like a broken record. Nag, nag, nag. It's up to me how I spend my time. Are you seeing a ban from relaxing to take my mind off the stress of trying to find a job now? Who gave you the authority to do that? The only thing you're good for is bringing in money anyway. If you can't even toss me a few dollars when I'm in a pinch, then what the hell do you bring to the table? What? What does that mean? The only reason I have to work like a dog now is because you got fired for acting like a moron. Job hunting? Give me a break. All you do is laze around on the sofa like a sack of potatoes. Then you have the nerve to spend the money I give you for getting around town on the slots? You have no right to be angry with me. Oh, just bought on it already. Nag, nag, nag. You think you're so much better than me just because you happen to have a job, don't you? Screw this. I'm going to sleep. No, you can't. Just get up and talk to me. I'm not finished. Jill? Jill! Excuse me, Pearl. Answer me. What is it? I'm at work right now. I hear you've been complaining to Jill again. Giving him a hard time because he's struggling to find work. How dare you go whining to him behind my back? You really are a spiteful, underhanded cretin of a woman. What? One thing you don't seem to understand about my son is that he's recharging his batteries right now. He's simply depressed because things didn't work out at his last company. Any normal wife would be trying to make her husband feel better right now. But far from it, you're actually going on the attack. You're atrocious. You're a devil, I tell you. A devil. There's nothing for it but divorce. The fact that you're messaging me like this now must mean that Jill just woke up from his hibernation on the sofa. And told you about the conversation I had yesterday, right? I bet he told you about what I had said about him finding a job, and nothing else. Am I right? Ugh, I give up. Now, you listen to me and you listen well, young lady. You need to make more of an effort to stand up for your husband. You need to have his back. Just because you happen to have a job doesn't make you any better than him. Right, sure. I'm sorry. I'm occupied with work right now, so would you be kind enough to tell me off later instead? I'm busy. Good grief. Look at you. A fully grown woman bragging about having a job like it's some kind of special achievement. Tell me, Pearl. What good is a woman who does nothing but work? Ugh. I'll never get any grandchildren with a daughter-in-law like you. How about you fulfill your feminine duties as a wife for a change? I must be the unluckiest, most mistreated mother-in-law in the whole world. Aren't you at least big enough to admit your wrongdoing and walk away with some dignity? Get a divorce! You're really annoying me now. Would you just shut up for once? What? How dare you? What has gotten into you today? Where did this rebellious attitude come from all of a sudden? Know your place, young lady. Who do you think the mistress of this household is? If you defy me, I'll have my son divorce you. Okay, divorce it is. Huh? Have it your way. I'll divorce him. It's not like I particularly enjoy being married to an unemployed leech anyway. Nor do I take any great pleasure in having to live with his parasitic megalomaniac old hag of a mother. I'm tossing that egotistical jobless douchebag in the gutter where he belongs. I'll divorce him then. Let's do it. I'm ready. Wait, what's gotten into you, Pearl? Is this some kind of joke? Are you being serious? You actually go through with it? <laughs> you see, the thing is, you should have known that there was a limit to how much of your crap I was willing to tolerate. What? Did you think I was just gonna shut my mouth forever like an obedient little slave while you hurled abuse at me? Are you and Jill actually aware of your current positions? What good is a woman who does nothing but work, you ask? 
How about putting food on the table for you and your waste of a space man-child of a son? Who do you think it is putting a roof over your heads? Who do you think it is who's looking after you and enabling your lazy deadbeat lifestyles? Go on, think about it. This one's really easy. Well? Oh my god, Pearl. What's gotten into you? This isn't like you at all. It's not that something's gotten into me. It's that you think you can manipulate and take advantage of me and my kindness. Ask yourself, do you think I enjoy feeding, clothing, and providing shelter for a malicious, bullying old hag of a mother-in-law? The only reason I reluctantly agreed to you living here in the first place was due to my mercy and kindness. Because I felt bad about you living all on your own after your husband died, and this is how you repay me? By walking around like you own the place and treating me like your slave? Then you have the nerve to threaten me with divorce when you don't get your own way? Do you have any awareness of how arrogant and shameless your behavior is? Well, are you going to answer me, you miserable sponging witch? No, but, but I... Taking care of your mother-in-law is a decent thing to do. <laughs> what? Um, I'm not sure that common decency like that applies to sponging vagrants. You are also aware that I'm not your daughter, right? Even still, I wouldn't tolerate this from my own mom. So what do you think gives you the right? If you were actually my mom, I'd be just as eager to get you out of my life. Pearl, wait! Pearl, I may not be your mother, but surely this is still no way to talk to your mother-in-law. And what on earth is with all this coarse, vulgar language? You barbarian! It's just that I thought all along, you are simply not suitable to be my son's wife. It's divorce for you. Divorce! Get out! I already told you I'm divorcing him. However, the only ones who need to get out are you two. What? Why? Ah, seems like you might have forgotten this minor detail. But the place you are currently living in rent-free like the pair of grotesque parasitic termites you are is the apartment I bought back when I was single. It's my name on the deed, and it's my apartment. What? Really? No way, you actually forgot? I did tell you before. Remember? It was the day you moved in. I gave you a thorough explanation about all the details regarding the living situation. Aren't you a little too young to be going senile? Well, now that you mention it, I think I might remember you telling me something along those lines. But you can hardly expect me to remember every conversation we had last year. The thing is, whether you remember or not makes zero difference to me. Once the divorce is finalized, you and the Sloth King will be packing your things and leaving for good. Because as I told you, you're living in my apartment. You'll no longer be my mother-in-law, and he'll no longer be my husband. And sadly for you, I'm not the kind of person to let a pair of strangers live like bums in my house. Now, I'll be handing Jill the divorce papers when I get home today. Make sure the two of you get your belongings together, okay? Luckily for you, in my infinite generosity and benevolence, I'm willing to give you until tomorrow evening to get out. Don't think you'll be getting anything to eat, though. Pearl, just wait! Surely you're not going to divorce him immediately, today. You don't actually plan on kicking your husband and mother-in-law on the streets, do you? I simply do not agree. This divorce isn't happening. I won't allow it. What the? Why have you done a complete 180 all of a sudden? You seem to be happy enough to walk all over me when you thought you could get away with it. You waved around the notion of a divorce like it was your prized family crest, using it as a pretext to say whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted. Then the moment you realize things are no longer going in your favor, you're suddenly opposed to it? Don't make me laugh. What? You're the one who started all this in the first place. You wanted a fight, didn't you? All I did was give you what you wanted. You should be grateful. Don't you dare start trying to worm your way out of it all of a sudden. And I won't allow it. Uh, who do you think you are? Since when were you the queen? Did I miss your coronation? 
How about you try cultivating some awareness of your own position for once and putting a lid on that monstrous mouth of yours? I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. It's too late to apologize now. I'm dead set on divorce and nothing can change my mind. Make sure you're gone by tomorrow night. And let me make one thing abundantly clear. There will be no distribution of assets. Jill, the eternal neat, has no savings of his own, and we have no shared accounts either. There's no money for him to receive, not a single cent, so don't bother trying to put in any claims. I would feel bad about throwing you out into the streets without any clothes, so I'll allow you to take the bare minimum of clothing and everyday necessities with you. I take it you have no complaints about that? If I've made myself clear, hurry up and get out of my apartment. And take your good-for-nothing son with you. Oh my god. Please. Please. Just wait. Wait. We don't have anywhere to live. We sold the family home and my husband passed. My pension doesn't amount to much either. Jill doesn't even have a job. Please. Oh, I see. Just so I understand, you'll be in dire straits because your sons are neat and you have no place to stay and no money, is that right? Okay, so what? Huh? That's not my problem. The fact that your sons are neat, or that you have nowhere to stay, or that you have no money. Yeah, none of these things are my fault. If you're struggling for money, you could always have Jill earn you both a living on the slots. And why can't you find a job? If you've got the energy to bully your daughter-in-law 24-7, then holding down a job shouldn't be a problem. I saw a local supermarket was recruiting the other day. Do that. Oh my god. God's not going to help you now. Nor is playing the victim. And I mean, please, is this really any way for a fully grown woman to behave? If you don't have any money, then you work. Surely you at least understand that. You're not a child. Why? Why are you doing this? I think you know full well why. Because you defy the mistress of this household. When I got home from work that evening, I was met at the door by Jill and his mother-in-law on their knees. They begged and pleaded in unison, We're sorry for the way we behaved. But I shook them off and said, If you've got time to be groveling on the floor, you've got time to get your things together. For the first time in what felt like forever, I made some food just for myself and was able to take a bath at a leisurely pace when I felt like it for a change. Then I retired to my bedroom, locked the door, put in some earplugs, and slept like a baby. The next day, the pair of them were desperately trying to butter me up by dashing around the house, making breakfast, and cleaning up. Then they got back on their knees and begged me once again, Please rethink the divorce. I swear I'll never set foot in a casino again. My response was to hand them the divorce papers and some bags full of their stuff. After which, I threatened to take them to court if they didn't sign the papers and get out by the end of the day. Jill panicked, reluctantly signed the papers, and left, taking his mother-in-law with him. With that, I was officially freed of the termite infestation plaguing my house before the day was up. I was so happy about being freed from my in-law-induced slavery that I raised a toast and celebrated in lavish style. The pair of them moved into a scruffy 70-year-old apartment, which they somehow paid the rent on by scraping together what was left of Jill's mom's pension and social security money. Apparently, Jill finally started looking for work in earnest and his mom got a part-time job at the supermarket. However, Jill's efforts didn't amount to anything, and he was constantly chided by his mom. Why are you forcing your aged mother to work? They got into thunderous shouting matches every day, and the neighbors, at their wit's end, started phoning in complaints. As things stand, it looks like they're on the verge of being kicked out. Again! <laughs> they really are a pair of morons! <laughs>